Hi everyone, I hope you're well. Thank you so much for joining me for the Distress Oxide Colour Combination Series. Now we're adding a new video today and this is Fossilised Amber. Thank you so much for all your lovely comments on the series so far. I'm really glad you're all enjoying and finding the videos beneficial. So I'll keep on going. We're up to the Fs now. We're working through all the colours alphabetically. We're on to Fossilised Amber. I think I had a look, there's one more F until we get into the next letter. Um, but this is a beautiful one. So this is one of our first yellows that we're really looking at and it is a, what I call a true yellow but it's kind of got a vintage feel to it as well. Now I'm going to also be doing a three colour and a four colour combination with this and what I love about this colour is it will go nicely into cools or into warms so I'll be experimenting with that um, but on its own it is absolutely stunning. Now everything I'm using as always is linked down below which includes the Distress Oxide colour swatch chart which I'll actually be showing you in a moment, uh, the brushes, the blending mat and of course all the Distress Oxides too. So let's first of all swatch fossilised amber. So it's a really beautiful yellow, as I say. It's got a, it's, it's quite warm, so it's got quite a nice sort of orangey browny base to it. It's not a bright sort of neon green yellow or anything like that. Like I say, it would work really nicely within uh, vintage colour tones or rather vintage colour combinations. Um, I just think it's a really nice all rounder. I think there's nothing too startling about it. It goes on absolutely beautifully. It's one of these colours that blends really quickly because it's quite a deep colour, but it's not too bright. So you've kind of got your creaminess to that. So you're going to see this better once we start to put it against other colours in the range. And you can start to then pick out what those undertones are, what it's going to work with. So let's then take a look at the Distress it is ink and oxide color swatch chart now this is free for you to download from my website it's linked below this is free to download as are the um the labels that i've got on all of my ink pads and they're colored labels you don't have to use colored ones though because i also have the black ones too black and white ones there that you can uh, all print off at home and cut out and pop onto things so like your blending brushes there i also have on my blending brush holder i have a label to tell me where to put each one back and so on and so forth but this has been for me the most helpful now this isn't the entire swatch chart i'm now refilling in a new one so it's all nice and shiny my old one got a bit tatty um, and I also had some colours that weren't in order because they'd just kind of been added on the end because I printed this out a long time ago before we had Lost Shadow, before we had Lumberjack Plan, all of those. So uh, I've recently updated it, printed it off, um, and this is the most recent uh, version. There's, I believe, one more colour to come out in the Distress range. I'm hoping it will kind of nicely slot on the end or towards the end, but we'll see. I will do a new version once that's in so that that, that last colour is in the right colour order. So uh, with this, you do also get, so you get your cover page entirely up to you if you want to use that or not, but I do also give you these ones. So this is for you to cut out a window to mask off for your squares. You don't have to do that. You can do it in any way you wish. Um, but there's three spares there and then there's one with instructions on how to use it and as you can see I cover that with packing tape just to give it a resistant surface so the paper doesn't get overloaded with ink and start to crumble away. I do it front and back and then that's my template, my stencil for my squares. But like I say, if you have got spares, you've got three more there if you want to use those too. So like I say, all free for you to download but let's get on with picking out the yellows. So I've got yellows in these two sheets. Everything's in kind of a colour order, so you've got all your oranges as such on one, your yellows and greens going into greens and blues and so on and so forth, so they're all kept together. Now we've got down the bottom here, fossilised amber. So this is the colour that I've swatched, as you can see, onto the white paper. Now this is interesting because while this colour is still damp, you can see it's a little bit brighter. This was done uh, yesterday or the day before, uh, and you can see it's kind of now it's completely dried and blended into the paper. It's a slightly different paper, but it has faded in colour ever so slightly. Not a lot, not a huge amount, but you can certainly see a difference when it's wet, it's slightly deeper, darker. So worth bearing in mind uh, when you are doing swatches and comparing um, colours like this. So fossilised amber sits very, very closely to scattered straw. Now scattered straw, I think, is almost exactly the same sort of tones 
and it's just slightly lighter in shade that's all so a few shades lighter um, if we go up into wild honey we're then looking at more of an orange base but again quite similar not too much difference there any further up so carved pumpkin dried marigold we're really going into the oranges so definitely much different there and then if we come over to the other side we've got squeezed lemonade which is much much brighter so much more of a almost a green base to this one uh, but mustard seed actually again isn't too far off more yellow than the sort of brown orangey base that we've got in here so a little bit brighter but i think if you are on a limited budget and you're wanting to pick up a nice yellow fossilized amber could also replace scattered straw and mustard seed for the time being when you're looking at color combinations obviously we all want to get all the oxide colors eventually but if you are picking and choosing which ones to start with i think you could definitely team these three kind of together and just get one of those colors so hopefully that helps some of you and like i say make sure you make your own color chart it's free to download um, and it's just so so helpful for that kind of thing but also for picking out color combinations um so i'm going to go in first of all our first color combination is going to be a three color one now my dry, dried marigold label is still very dirty i don't know what happened to it something leaked on it <laughs> um but i'm going to go with fossilized amber dried marigold and ripe persimmon for this one now we have already got a video on dried marigold so you'll be able to see that if i just link that up there at the top so if you like this color or you're interested in this color you can go and have a look at that in more detail the way we have here and let's just put this into look at that color isn't it stunning it's a sort of peachy apricot color just going into the fossilized amber now just bear in mind because i did this a few minutes ago that's going to be drying getting towards dry this is going to be wet it's going to be a little bit harder to blend so i am going to pick up some more fossilized amber blend that in and just help with that transition with the wet ink rather than trying to go into dry ink it's not impossible but it's definitely easier if you've got wet ink now look how subtle that is but it's lovely isn't it it's so pretty just starting to creep into the peachy orangey color there and they blended so so beautifully together so then let's give this a hit of color a hit more depth on the end with ripe persimmon now each time i'm wiping my mat i do it with a wet wipe or a damp cloth and then i do it with a dry cloth because i don't want to have uh, water interacting with my paper my blending because that's just going to uh, react and then we're going to have all sorts of uh, patterns on our paper splodges all sorts it's just i mean it's a lovely lovely property of the distress oxides that they react with water it's one of my favorite reasons i have stocked up on all the colors because i really love the way they work but um it's not always helpful if you don't want them to react with water <laughs> if you want to keep a really perfectly smooth base so i'm going back in with dried marigold brush here i've already got some on the bristles i'm hoping so i'm just going to blend this in there and come up into the ripe persimmon because that is a much deeper darker color so any ripe persimmon that i may have on my brush i'm just going to brush the excess off onto uh, a clean paper towel and there we go i think that is absolutely perfect now that's beautiful what i'm trying to do within this uh, series is give you a subtle color blend so something that's really quite tonal and then also give you one that's got some pops of contrast as well so you can pick and choose for a background if you want something subtle that is going to be amazing so 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 pretty so again that's fossilized amber that we're looking at today dried marigold and ripe persimmon so let's now do another combination let's put that to the side give everything a clean and let's go in with something a little different so we're now going to be looking at bringing this into the cooler tones i'm going to do this with rusty hinge evergreen bow and pine needles so this is going to be really interesting how this works out now we've got a darker color on both ends uh, if you've watched any of my other videos you'll know that i like to do the dark color at the end last or on the edge whichever way it may be if i've got a combination and i'm working through um, which order to put them in the darker one usually goes towards the end and then i kind of just edge that in and i'll show you what i mean uh, here so pine needles being the very darkest 
is going to be on the end there but just look at those absolutely yummy perfect kind of masculine sort of color color tones here so let's start with rusty hinge first of all so just popping this here so just going just over a quarter there I know that's a nice strong color then we're going to go into fossilized amber and again just taking this around a half or even more now I'm just going up to the rusty hinge there because I don't want to lose it. I don't want to edge the fossilised amber into rusty hinge. I'm going to now use the excess on my brush and bring this back down a little bit further until the two just blend seamlessly. Now moving into the green, so I'm going to again wipe my mat so that none of the yellow or the orange contaminates the green. So evergreen bow, a beautiful teal green colour. First of all, I'm going to put this down onto the white cardstock. You may think, well, she hasn't left a lot here. That's what I want. I don't want to have too much of the dark colour. I want the dark colour to just be on the very, very end. And like I say, I've kind of explained this in videos before. It's just almost uh, a shadow at the end. So just going up to the yellow there and almost filling the rest of this white strip. Now I am going to eventually do a video where I show you what I've done with all of these colour strips because they're lovely to keep and swatch um, but I'm going to, after each one I do actually name the colours. So I name the colours and then on the back there and then I keep these and they're really handy to keep and refer back to for colour combinations so I'll show you all of that in another video. So just bringing in again fossilised amber with what's already on my brush lightly in circles just going into that gorgeous evergreen bow and again just picking up there I mean that on its own is beautiful if you do want to just pick out two or three colors from these combinations rather than the entire selection you can absolutely do that as well and then lastly pine needles so as I say this is just going to be on the very end and then blending up into evergreen bow a beautiful colour again evergreen <coughs> excuse me sorry evergreen bow we do have the uh, video for already that's up on the playlist which is going to be linked above and at the end of the video so you can see how that works on its own look at that let's just do I think just a little more blending into this end just bringing it up a touch more and there we go give this a while I do clean as I go where possible so give that a second to dry it always looks better once it's all dried so there's those four colors and that's the combination that that has made now we've done similar combinations in the past with um, blues on the end and you know what sometimes because I do have my favorite colors you may find that I do a very similar combination when I do another video using one of these but you know that's just one of those things I can't remember everything I did but again really really beautiful now bringing that quite dark so I think I've done combinations like this that are a little bit brighter so that's that one and then we had this one also with fossilized amber so two beautiful beautiful combinations there for you to go away and try all using fossilized amber now don't forget everybody if you love this video and you're interested in this series please do give me a subscribe a thumbs up would be brilliant uh, and go and check out the other videos that we've got so far there's already 21 22 videos for you to go back and look at uh, as I say I'm working through everything alphabetically so if there's a particular color you're waiting for it will be along as soon as possible um, but that is fossilized amber so thank you so much everything I've used you can find in the description below including this color swatch chart as well so take care everybody and I'll see you again for another video very very soon.